Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we are going to be looking at some word problems with two equations. So we'll take a look at trying to tackle some word problems, specifically word problems that have two equations. Some background on word problems. First of all, there is no possible way to prepare for every single situation, especially in a short video. What I'm going to do is try and express a couple of general steps and then show some sample problems. The key is the more familiar, familiar you are with the math, the easier it is to apply what you know. So if you're not comfortable with math with two equations, um, systems of equations and things like that, slope, um, you might want to go back and review those topics so that when you get those questions you are more familiar. Some general steps are often given for solving word problems. They're called different things but basically they follow this pattern. You look for what the questions asking, you start strategizing of how you're going to actually solve the question, what operations you'll use and things like that. Then you set up an equation, solve the equation, check your work. Those are just some general steps. Um, some people call them totally different things, but those are the basic steps that you'll follow when you're solving word problems. You can write those down, pause the recording if you'd like, um, or you can just watch through these examples that I'm going to show you here in a second. So here's the first type of word problem. This is an exact sample um, from the the common core suggested sample questions. So here's a question, a word problem question or mathematic problem um, that you may encounter. L uh, line A passes through the points 1, 6, and 4, 12. Line B passes through the points 0, 14, and 1, 11. Do these lines intersect? So let's talk for a little bit about what skills that you will need to know to be able to answer this type of question. First off, you're going to need to know how to find slope. Slope is how steep or shallow a line moves up and down. And you need to know what slope means. It means one of three things. First of all, if the slope is the same, then these lines are parallel. And they either do not cross, like in the first um, bullet there, or if the slope is the same and they have one point in common, then they are exactly the same line and every point's in common and they intersect everywhere. So they either don't intersect at all or they intersect at infinite number of points if the slope is the same. The third option is if the slope is different they will intersect at one point. Some point. We don't need to know what that is. The question's not asking where they intersect or what the equations of the line are. All we really need to know is what is the slope of this line. That makes it less complicated. So let's go ahead and solve it. The slope of two lines, sorry. Here's the equation for slope. Slope is our y value from point number 2 minus our y value from point number 1. So in other words, we're looking at the first line, our y value 12 and 6, and then our x value 4 and 1. To set up the equation, 12 minus 6 is, whoops, 6, and 4 minus 1 is 3. 6 over 3 gives us the slope of 2. So that's going to be the slope of the first line. The line that passes through those two points has a slope of 2. Now let's look at line B that passes through the point 0, 14, and 1, 11. We're going to set this up um, as a subtraction question again y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, 11 minus 14 over 1 minus 0. That gives us negative 3 over 1, and our slope is negative 3. So we know something here. The slope of these two lines is different. That means that they will intersect at one point. Okay? We don't need to find the equation of the lines. We don't need to find where they intersect. We just know they have a different slope, so at some time they're going to intersect each other. They're not parallel is basically what we've discovered. Now for something totally different. Um, this is a word problem that does use two equations, but it requires completely different skills to be able to solve it, so let's take a look. Two ebooks, The Exile and The Invasion by Eric Buffington. <laughs> I hear he's a good author. Um, they cost different amounts. The exile costs two dollars and the invasion costs three dollars. If Jim spends forty three dollars buying seventeen books, how many of each book did he buy? That's the question that we're looking for. 
The skill set that we're going to need to be able to solve this equation is this. We're going to need to be able to name variables. We're going to be able, need to be able to combine variables or combine equations. And also, we're going to need to recognize that 17 books of two different kinds can be represented with one variable. It can be x plus 17 minus x. In other words, let's say I sold two copies of the exile. This would be two copies of the exile and 17 minus 2 or 15 copies of the invasion. 2 plus 15 would give me my total of 17. No matter how many um, books I sell of one type or the other, this will give me one variable to find both of those numbers. So we have to do that, and that might be the most confusing part. Let me show you how it would work with this example. The cost of the exile, the exile is 2 times B. $2 times B, which is the number of books that were sold or bought. Okay. The cost of the invasion is $3 times 17 minus B. So 17 is our total number of books. I subtract the number of the exile copies. And that will give me the number of the invasion copies that were sold. So that's how I would figure this out. Now I'm going to combine together these two equations to solve for my variable of b. That'll look like this. The cost of the exile plus the cost of the invasion equals $43. Here it is. 2b plus 3 times 17 minus b is equal to 43. That's how we combine together those two equations. This might be the most challenging part of solving this specific word problem and word problems of this type, is recognizing that I know there's two variables. The variable, you could say E for exile, I for invasion. But to be able to solve for any of them, you have to just have one variable. Okay, so this equation, 2b plus 3 times 17 minus b, the reason we set it up is so that we have one variable, b, and we can actually solve the equation. You can't solve an equation when it has two variables. Okay? So you have to set it up so that there's just one variable. And that, again, is probably the hardest part, the part that takes the most amount of time to wrap your head around. Once we have the equation, solving it might not be a problem. Let's take a look. Here's our equation. 2b plus 3... Um, I'm going to multiply 3 times 17 and 3 times negative b. I'm going to join together my b values on the left side of the equation. 2b minus 3b gives me negative b. I'm going to subtract 51 from both sides of the equation, giving me a negative 8 on the right side of the equation. When I multiply both of these times negative 1, I'm given positive numbers. b is equal to 8. What that means is that eight copies of the exile were sold. So the way that we discover how many copies of the invasion were sold is we say our total number of books, 17, minus eight leaves us with nine. So nine copies of the invasion were sold. All right, and that's how we solve this type of question. Again, a totally different skill set from the first question that we solved totally different skill set and yet both of them are linear equations that we're combining together so it's kind of a, a challenge the the challenge I think comes with how many different types of questions can come from the same exact anchor so just a couple things to keep in mind number one there is no way to prepare for every single situation however that does not mean stop studying that means become familiar with the math so that when you see a question, you can recognize how to apply it. The good news is, when you develop the problem solving and critical thinking skills involved in doing this process, it's actually going to be a great skill for you um, in all different aspects of your life. Being able to critically think and problem solve is going to be good for you. I want to show you the Common Core MPA eligible content. Look down at the example under the PA eligible content. The example, given two co uh, coordinates for two pairs, determine whether the lines intersect. That's um, why I picked the first question that I did. The reason I picked the second question is because it was from um, that type of question was from a sample, a list of sample questions based on this eligible content. So these are two questions based on on the same exact anchor um, and ones that are 
very specific to the type of question that you'll see. So I hope that lesson's been helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.